Hello. Hello. Well, if I didn't get to shout and dance and I'm on what will. That didn't ring your bell, your bell must be broke. That didn't light the fire, your wood must be wet. But we'll see what happens from here on out. I appreciate all of you, and it's really been good. We can just leave right now and say we've been to church. You know, we felt more of the Holy Ghost right here tonight than some churches that has experienced in years, just in one service. And we better treasure that, and we better appreciate that. I'll tell you what, I appreciate you the Holy Ghost, don't you? Amen. And uh, that last song, my daughter, good to have my daughter with me. My sweet, sweet baby girl. She's 16, just to turn 17. Hannah, she keeps me straight. And she don't want me dating nobody, so she keeps a close eye. <laughs> I don't know what, if she knows karate or taekwondo, it's daughter or taekwondo, I guess you know. And then if she's not enough, then I got my granddaughter here next to the oldest, Ellie, she's a deer slayer. She's a real good shot with that 273, 23, whatever it was she shot that deer with yesterday. So I, I didn't know when we right then, that's probably why she's taking target practice. I tell them all the time, I'm too fat and old and ugly, you ain't got to worry about that. But it's good to have them, and I appreciate them coming with me. Brother Rick, he's a deacon and guitar player, bass player. We work together and just uh, right on, you know, with the blessing. He's an armor bearer. If it's such thing nowadays, he's, he's it. I appreciate yeah. him. Good to have Brandon with us tonight and his son. His many means with him tonight. And his sweetie Ashley is good to see them. Good to see all of them. Good to see the Millers here tonight. Sabrina and Tim Miller. <laughs> Some of you did, you'll get that later. That's Miller with a K, right? <laughs> We're liable to see him uh, going viral on uh, Facebook or whatever book you do. And on the uh, funny videos. When they got wedded and married, I was there and it was quite funny, but that video is even funnier. <laughs> that he pronounced from the Tim, Mr. and Mrs. Tim Miller instead of Keller. And then some more stuff. You just have to watch it. She'll tell you how to But, uh, wow, good singing, brother. Nikolai's a good singer. Yeah, yeah the Lord bless him. And all of and of course, we've got to honor the man of God and the pastor. I've been trying for 43 years to learn how to do this, so I don't know if I'm getting any better. But we do honor Brother August, and the First Lady's not feeling good, so we miss her tonight. We appreciate them, and Brother Jason, wherever he's at. Um, I used to be the best looking guy around, but Jason's here, and I'm hanging out. He's always a good looking guy and so kind. We appreciate him. And Brother August, you know, is the easy goingest guy in the world. I don't think I ever seen him mad or even disturbed or upset where you could tell it. And I've always just, uh, I won't say worshiped him, but he's been real close, you know. He took time for me when I was a little guy. And He's really not that much older than me, but when you're certain ages, you know, 10 and a few years like that makes a lot of difference. And uh, impacted my life and everybody that I've impacted in ways I can, you, you can't measure that until you get to heaven, really, you just don't know. But I appreciate him, but I did get mad at him one time. And I gotta tell you about that. Jason was just a little bitty fella. Believe it or not, he used to be little. And he used to have seizures before he got divinely healed. I'm talking about divinely healed by the healing power of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yes. And he had a seizure and they was over the church. And that was back before they had cell phones and stuff. So Sister Bob was calling the house. And I had to be at the parsonage. And I was 
maybe $1,100, something like that. And so I thought, we're having a medical emergency here. So I ran all the way to the church, which it was, seemed like 40 miles, but it was probably a mile and a half, two miles. I ran over there, and my, I was skinny back then, but that was still a pretty good run. And out of my side, I was hurt, and I was sad, and I was telling him what was going on, and he said, mm -hmm. he said, he'd be all right. <laughs> He's a lot bigger than me, especially back then. And I, I, if I could have, I probably would have tackled him. I did in my mind. <laughs> but I found out he was, he was right. And he knew God had it. It seemed very dire at the time. Man. But I appreciate him and putting up with me all these years. And you, everybody here, some of you have known for so long. It's good to see Jeff and his uh, wife at all over these many years, Wendy. And she's put up with him. And, you know, Heaven's going to be worth it after all. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but we, we've been through a lot together. Carson and Sweetie back there. Her name is Jennifer, but she's everybody's frozen my mind. I always call her Sweetie now. So that's her, her tag now. But, and Teresa, my little buddy from back in the old days. She was, uh, she's younger than me. I'm older than I look. Y'all don't do something old. But anyway, it's good to see you in the we love you. We love And Dennis and Yvonne. Just all of you. And if I start naming the names, I'll just have to put name tags on everybody. We love y'all. Appreciate you. But, you know, more than anything, I love God. And I know He loves me. And I love this old time. Holy Ghost feel, fire baptized way. And you know, at the end of the day, it's what we need. We gotta have it. And I really believe this with everything that's in me. What America needs is a revival. We need a revival. And whatever I encourage everybody, anybody that might labor on here by Facebook, anything your pastor does to try something, back them up. If you don't believe in it, if you don't uh, agree with it, you don't understand it, go anyway and back it up because that's how things happen. There's going to be a day. You know, we're not there yet, but I believe there's going to be a, a next wave of the glory and the anointing of God. I don't know about you. I, want, I feel it here tonight. I want to be right smack dab in the middle of it. It's going to be something wonderful. It won't be just like it was then. It'll be better. Amen. I think it's, it's good and good and good. Don't you? If you love the Lord, I dare you to put your hands together and worship Him. I'm going to try, try to do this in, in a timely manner, but I, I want to take time to say a few things like that. I usually just get wound up and miss it. So I don't have to be long-winded. My granddaughter, I asked her, I said, what can we do to make church better? She said, well, we can have more dinners. <laughs> no argument for me, we'll do it. She said, we can have shorter preaching. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. I take that under advice, but I ain't making no promises. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, God's got a blessing for us. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Chapter number 8. The Lord has been dealing with me about this thought for some time of year. Verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, does anybody know you're a child of God tonight? If we're children, that means something. That means we're heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If 
so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Verse 18, for I reckon, somebody asked me if I thought that Paul was out of South Jerusalem. Well, we got proof right here he was. I reckon. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Let me do it one more time. I don't think you get it. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the sacrifices of this present time are not worthy to even be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Father, in the name that's above everything, in the name of Jesus, our prayer is have your way in this place. God, not one of us needs to leave here the same way we came. But God, help us be encouraged, help us be submissive to the Holy Ghost. Lord, and we just pray, God, that you begin to move in this place. We'll have ears to hear, Lord, and eyes to see and a heart to receive and understand. God, let us be a part of this last day promise that you've given us, that you would pour out of your spirit, pour out your spirit in this place. Let us be vessels of honor to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to preach this on the thought just a few minutes tonight. No pain, no gain. You ever heard that before? Now, as you can tell by looking at me, I'm into sports, and I'm a real sports figure. <laughs> but I, I do understand sports a little bit that I don't want to do. Because it requires a lot of things. But uh, not long ago, I heard about something. I read a story, and I just want to kind of share this to kind of set a base here. But whenever they started keeping uh, records of uh, long distance runners, mile runners, there was nobody that could break the four minute mile for over, almost a hundred years. But then in 1954, on May the 6th, there's a guy named Roger Bannister that ran the mile in three minutes, 59.4 seconds. Then all of a sudden, the impossible became possible. You know what? He didn't just get up to make the bowl of cornflakes and do that. He tried. He had some pain to get there. He had cramps to get there. And after that he broke the four-minute mile, then all of a sudden, in just a short period of time, there's a guy named John Landy that ran the mile in three minutes and 58 seconds, over a second faster than he did. And it continued on, and in 1999, there's a guy who ran the mile in three minutes and 43 seconds, and third, uh, three minutes, 43 seconds, point 13, and that is a record from 1999 till now. Then I began to think about, you know, in my family, everybody likes to be strong, physically strong. So I read about a guy that was 62 years old, and it amazes me that how physically strong that uh, someone, I'll say now older, because I'm 60. And here this guy, 62 years old, and he bench pressed 1,129.9 pounds. That was this year, in 2022. That was in January. Man, that's massive. But then, you know what? After all that work, and he got into history books, it was short-lived a month later, a guy named Jimmy Cole bench pressed 1,320 pounds, 190 pounds more than that guy. Now, there was nothing wrong with what Mr. Gillespie did. That was a pretty miraculous thing. And he went through a lot of pain to be able to do that. No pain, no gain. But there's always another step to take. 
Well, and my experience with that is not from sports, but from physical situations I've had. I've had to do physical therapy. Anybody ever done physical therapy? And I found out real quick what they want to do is they want to hurt you. <laughs> they want to hurt you. Because, you know, their philosophy is just like sports. No pain, no gain. Because what they do know is this. That if we are just left to our own vices, most people will not push that knee that next little step. And then you're going to have a knee that won't operate. Won't move that shoulder that next little step or you'll have a shoulder that will freeze and won't operate. And I personally have seen people, even people much older than me that were physically almost uh, in a wheelchair and they would fall and break a hip and then they would do a hip surgery. And all of a sudden they find themselves in a situation where they're doing physical therapy and all of a sudden they're moving in a way they've not moved in years because they accepted the fact that I hurt too bad, I can't move this way and I can't move that way and it's a bad thing for me to do because if I do that it hurts me and so we allow pain to stop us from achieving things that we need to achieve and then we just almost come to a dead total stop. But I've watched those same people when they get a physical therapy and they're pushing them and they're saying no pain, no gain and all of a sudden you've got an 80 some year old lady that had rode a bicycle since she's a teenage girl she's riding on them bicycles and all of a sudden her blood starts circulating and all of a sudden you know what they find if not only are they able to move in ways they've not moved in here, they're feeling better. Then all of a sudden, their quality of life starts raising. And I found out that in the spirit world, it's very much the same. And this book that we read here, that if we suffer with him, is anybody in here with me tonight? That means we're going to reign with him. And suffering always is not a bad thing. Amen. The Bible says in weakness, we are made strong. And I've found out in my own personal life. And you read the pages of the book. Amen. That people can suffer and still shine. Amen. And you know what? I believe the church of the living God. We might be suffering sometimes. Amen. But even in our suffering, we're shining. Amen. We'll give God the glory. We'll praise Him in the good time. We'll praise Him in the bad time. Amen. And no suffering we go through now is worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed. Not just in the sweet time time, but I believe God's going to show His glory one more time in the house of God. He's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon his people which there is obviously God somebody will hear what I'm trying to tell you somebody you may be suffering tonight you may be hurting tonight and the devil is trying to tell you don't move don't get involved don't be a part of that because you might get hurt again but I'm telling you what sometimes that no pain no pain get up amen no cross no crown without the cross of Christ without your cross and you bearing your cross you don't get to wear the crown Praise the end of God. Amen. Sometimes it hurts, but get up and go anyway. Amen. Amen. God wants to take it. He wants us to have new life. He wants us to have abundant life. Amen. Somebody that loves him, I dare you to give him just a little bit of praise here. Good morning. Good morning. Somebody, I've been saying, you know, for years, they said you can't break that. It's impossible. Some people here tonight, the devil's whispering and sitting in your ear, it's impossible. You can't sin again. You can't preach again. You can't do this again. You can't do that again. Remember, the devil is alive. And something happened after that man broke that four man in mile. After he broke it over and over and over again, I'll tell you, great athletes can run, break the four man mile on a regular basis. But you know, if one person had, had a believe that. If he would have just accepted the fact, I can't run no faster than what they say I can run, it would have never been broken. But because somebody was willing to keep on pushing and pushing through, is I hope you're getting what I'm trying to tell you. Somebody in the church needs to learn how that we can push on through. And when the devil's whispering in their ear, we can't have revival again. That Holy Ghost stuff you're talking about is for yesteryear. I think what the devil is a liar. If we'll push on through, I believe that God is a to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon his church, which there's not room enough to receive it. My God, somebody ought to praise in here in this place, but somebody has got to be willing to push through. Somebody's got to be willing to pass. Somebody's got to be willing to suffer that we might shine. Amen. Somebody magnify the Lord with me in this place. Amen. Give God some praise. It's all right. Praise him, praise him, praise him. 
I do know this. Anything God wants to do, the devil wants to stop it. Yeah. And if he can discourage you, he'll do it. And he's no gentleman. You don't have to be middle-aged to be discouraged. You can be old or you can be very young. The devil hates us all equally the same. He would love to destroy little children. That's why that we have a, a abortion rampant like it is today. Using abortion for a form of birth control. It's a horrible thing, but the devil hates infants. He hates aged people. People in the nursing home. You know what? They got a soul and God loves an old person in the nursing home. A, a, a person that has physical problem that may be in a nursing home. I'm not, I say that with all respect. I love the nursing home ministry. But there are souls that have thank that Jesus died for them. He died for that infant that's murdered on a daily basis. And he died for you and he died for me. And we, the church of a living God, although our society may be running crazy, I mean, what, who would ever thought that we would have in our government transvestites and, and different things like we got in government promoted them to high office, but it's there. They you not know what we can do. We can get so discouraged. We just sit down and give up and just start wringing our hands and just wait for this to be over. Amen. God never said to do that. He said, I want you to occupy until I come. That means we'll be a ruling force. Amen. We will not tell what it's time that we become the church militant. Amen. Thank God the church ain't that triumphant. That we're not going to take it lying down. Amen. But we're going to stand up and cry aloud and stare at God. Amen. Let God arise. And as heaven ain't be scattered, I wish somebody would give the Lord a praise here in this place. So we got to be with us. No pain, no pain. Sometimes it hurts, but you push through. Sometimes there's people that will leave you, and it hurts, but you push through. Don't ever give up. I think you're looking at a guy. Somebody told me one time, said, you don't know when to quit. He was really trying to cut me down, you know. And I, you know what I did? I looked at him and said, thank you. You know what? Quitters never win, winners never quit. We're not going to quit. We're not giving up. And it does seem like, and I, you know what? Uh, there's hundreds of pastors quit every week, just walk away from pulpit. They're just discouraged. And, you know, David encouraged himself in the Lord. There's times we need to do that. Is anybody here with you? And if we want service, if we want God to move in the service, we can't sit there like a mom on the log and be a spectator and sign that we get involved. And that's not here. We can't sit back and expect the pastors to come by and bring them in a briefcase and a fancy a suit or a fancy hairdo. Amen. We've got to be praying and fasting and seeking God. Is anybody here in this place that created an atmosphere where God is well? He inhabits the Lord or dwells in the praise of his people. If we want to get there, it means that sometimes we're going to have to suffer a little bit and then push the plate back. And then get down on your prayer bones and begin to pray for God to move and have his way and get fleshed out of the way. Is anybody here? With me, know what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. I know it's not popular now, days, Amen. But no, Jesus Himself said, if anybody is going to follow me, they've got to be willing to take up your cross every day and follow me. That means there's going to be some suffering to do. That means there's going to be some sacrifices that we've got to make. But I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it after all. When we see that person in the altar, we've been praying for. Amen. And we see them shaking under the power of the Holy Ghost. When we see that drug addict get delivered from the drugs and that alcoholic, amen, get delivered from alcoholism, amen, there must be something in the church that's more powerful than the drug or the alcohol or whatever that it is that times people. I believe the power of God is real today and I believe His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And I believe I hear that great power of witness is saying, go on! Go on and sing it. Go on and shout it. Go on and live it. My God, somebody ought to give the Lord some praise here in this place. I'm telling you, I believe it. If I didn't believe it, I would not be here. I just load up and go on a vacation. I'm old enough now. I go on an extended vacation and nobody think nothing about it. But I'm telling you what, I don't have nothing against vacations. I, I've never been on vacations too good, but I'm going to try to learn. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I try to get my daughter to go with me on a cruise. She don't want to go, so I ain't going to make her. I'm going to prove by myself. Hey. It won't be at her spot, but I'm not find a girlfriend after all. That's right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm 
good again. But my point is, that the larger point is this. Is that we've got to be willing to push through. Yeah. And I believe with everything that's in me, that the most important thing in my life, your life and your children's life, is that we have the church triumphant. Yeah. Yeah. And we will be a part of the church triumphant. Yeah. And it's not just a story. It's not just a museum that we can read about it and talk about it and it's, it's over with and it can never happen again. I get so sick and tired of hearing people say, I feel sorry for these young people. They'll never know what it's like. If they don't know what it's like, it's not grandma's fault or grandpa's fault. Most of them done gone on. If they don't experience it, it's your fault and it's my fault. And I'll tell you what, you're looking at a guy that stands here and you, amen. If I'm not going down without a pie, amen. I know that God wants to move and I I know that God is just as real right now as he was way back then. Amen. Thank God that God let God arise and in heaven and be scattered. Amen. I'm going on with Jesus just the same. Somebody slap your hands together. Please. Well, Pastor, you just don't know what I've been through. You know, I, I get. I think sometimes I, I get a little bit I'm sorry for myself. No more than I've been through. I think, man, these old saints would rise up and slap me upside the head. That's true. I know that's real theological terminology. I know. That's true. But you know what? Some people say something like this. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Oh. I get kind of had a witness somewhere. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody. You know, I don't want that to be my thing, so I've had some hits. Right. I've been hit high and hit low. But I'm not going to complain about how I'm in my opinion. All I can tell you is that when the devil stole his worst at me, that's when God's his best for me. Right. And in weakness, I am made strong. God's word stand when the world's on fire. I wish somebody give the Lord. Yeah. Most times come in that we don't take them realistically. We know they're there. But I'm looking beyond what that. I know that I can suffer and still shine. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know whenever that steel becomes this most pure is when it's put through the fire. And when it's put through pressure, diamonds are formed under pressure. Gold and everything that's precious and worth having has got to be put under pressure for the purified. Amen. I'm telling you what, the church has been put under pressure. Amen. But you know what's happening is purified. The church of the living God. Amen. It's anybody here with me. And the devil throws everything, one thing right after another against the church. Amen. But in the midst of it all, there's something boiling up underneath it in the surface. And the devil don't see it. The world may not see it. But amen, there's saints of God that we're together with his spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is bearing witness with our spirit that God's about to do something. We know God ain't done yet, but the best is yet to come. I caught somebody that believes the best is yet to come. Praise him a little bit in the church. He's worth it. You've got to go through it to get to it. You've got to go through it to get to it. To get to it. Whenever the children of Israel walked to the Red Sea, I'll try to close with this. And my mind is so graphic, I'm blessed. I, can, I don't need a DVD or I don't even need streaming or nothing like that. I can see it. I'm there. I'm there with it. I walked across that Red Sea. I can't tell you how many times. But I walked over on dry land. Water tile up on either side. You know why I like walking across the wheel? Because I like getting to the other side. Because when they got to the other side of the day, Miriam and those women took their tambourines. You remember when they used to bring tambourines to church? And them same women of God full of the Holy Ghost and had a boldness and a, and a fire in them. And then when they got to the other side, they started dancing. I'm talking about they dance. Amen. They dance and they praise God when they got to the other side. Amen. I don't know if you feel what I feel, but I believe we're about to the other side. Amen. It's time to get out the tambourine. It's time to dance. It's time to celebrate. It's time to sing a brand new song that we've never sung before. Look what the Lord has done. My God, somebody praise Him in this place. Give you thank you for Amen. Go so back there, church. I don't want to miss out on it. I don't want to read about it happening somewhere else. I want it to happen here 
and I want happen in our local churches. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I know because I'm not just thinking. I know. I told you. I think before. I've been down praying. I said, God, anywhere, anytime. And it wasn't in just moments of time. Sister Marcus messaged me and asked me about coming up here. And I don't think we're there yet, but we've been having some good service. We're not there yet. The other day I was in a car and uh, one of the brothers in church, one of the ministers from our church, I was taking him to Knoxville, and we just mentioned the preacher. I hadn't talked to him in two or three years. Brother Ward at the passage in Johnson City. Uh, we got to, to the hospital there where I was taking him to have some things done. Whenever I got there, within 15 minutes, Brother Ward was calling my phone. Within an hour, he said, I need you to come up here and preach God to lay you on my heart. Now, I'm not a great preacher. Don't claim to be an anointment. I'm a good pastor because I love people. That's not right. That's just up to the back. But I know I'm not a good preacher. But you know what? And I always avoid it going because there's so many good preachers. But you know what? I've told God not anywhere, anytime. And if they call me from the Catholic Church, Brother David, I'm going. And I'll just preach how I preach. I can't, I can't get in a preaching contest because I don't have to. But I'm just going to preach like I preach. Right. And if God opens the door, I'm going. I know I'm too old, but I shouldn't be, but I'm doing it anyway. Because you know why? Because I believe God's up to something. Yes. I said, I believe God's up to Amen. something. Does anybody believe yes. God's up to something? Yes. I believe God's up to something. Yes. Oh. Yes. So don't be discouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes. The best is that you're going to and enter in with thanksgiving. Enter in with praise. You want to make things better for your pastor? You want to make, make things better for the praise team? Be prayed up when you get here. Be praised up when you get here. You know what? It makes our praising easier, the singing easier, and the preaching easier. And it makes the spirit of the atmosphere welcome of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to ask everybody if you would, let's sing it. I believe there's some people here in this house that know how to appreciate the Holy Ghost. The true, true, genuine move of God. And I don't think we're going to have to leave here like we came in Jesus' name. I don't think we're, God's done with us yet. Your best days are not behind you. They're ahead of you. Don't you listen to the lie of the devil. You might have been through some stuff. This is going to make you who you are. Make you shine for the glory of God. But what I want to encourage you to do, she's going to sing something, I'm going to encourage you to come out of your seat down all over the building. And let's have a little talk with Jesus. Would you come right down in the name of Jesus? Amen. No pain, no pain. You've been through some things, but it's taking you somewhere. Sometimes what seems like the worst thing that can ever happen to you, God turns and He knows how to flip the script and make it the best thing that ever happened to you. Come on. Come on, let's have a talk with you. Let's pour our heart and let's open up our soul to a real move of God.
Oh!